If we take a more careful look at the total anatomy of the vitreous, we should realize that apart from the cornea through which we look and the lens which converges the rays of cornea and both the lens onto the macula, the light passes through a vital portion of the eye called the vitreous body. Most people think that the vitreous body is a gelatinous substance which only serves to fill the eye. We know, however, that there are a number of specific structures in this organ called the corpus vitreum by the ancient anatomists, meaning the vitreous body, and the body it is in its own right. As much as the organs in the chest are organs which each have their specific anatomical names, so has the vitreous body its specific anatomical structures. An excellent part is the macula, but how does the macula relate to the vitreous? By a sac-like structure, a pocket in the vitreous called the bursa primacularis. Without this bursa, the macula cannot physiologically function. Behind the lens is a space which is called burger space, and from that space, aqueous may enter the posterior segment by way of pre-existing channel systems. One disease, for instance, is enigmatic only to those who do not understand the essentials of vitreous function. The cystoid macuridema will occur any time the anterior segment is opened in such a way that the aqueous humor will enter the bursa primacularis and thereby disturb the normal biochemistry of the macula. As I said, the vitreous is a gel-like structure, as you can see here. And let there be n no doubt that it has to be like a gel, otherwise we couldn't look through it. But on closer examination, we find a number of interesting features. Here we are going to show the first surgical act, full of danger, the extraction of a lens by means of a cryo-extractor. If one performs such an operation on a younger person, there is a risk of opening the anterior versus the posterior segment. You just are going to watch the modern approach to cataract surgery, which is the extracapsular procedure. The capsule has been opened and we are harpooning the lens, an unusual procedure in surgery, but an effective way in anatomy. The lens is peeled out from the capsular bag, and in a moment you will see how the capsular bag has been opened by a transverse section. The fibers here are cortical fibers, not zonular fibers. Very clearly now, the rupture in the anterior capsule. This extracapsular procedure will prevent aqueous from taking this particular route, but if we inject in burger space, you will see that two typical channels are injected with ink. But on the far left, a strange flat structure appears which is the first moment that you can look at the bursa primacularis. The bursa is part of a complex system of cisterns and highly specific in its anatomical arrangement. Next to it is Martijani's area. The bursa can be examined in various ways. One of them is to aspirate the membrane which closes it off against the fovea, as you see here, in the center. The lines crossing it are vascular lines 
of the vascular tree enveloping the macula. One can aspirate the membrana limitans interna, which is very strong. There are a number of feathery structures, but if under certain conditions an air bubble enters the eye, you'll see how this bubble has filled the bursa, which is tent-like, pulled up, and what will happen to this little air bubble if one turns the specimen upside down. The bubble will reappear on the anterior surface. One may now ask, which route has this bubble taken? In a moment you'll be informed.